Hello, welcome to this new video in which we'll continue creating graphical screens for a delivery order application. This time, we're going to create this registration page you see on screen, utilizing code we covered in a previous video. But before starting, do you dream of becoming an expert in .NET development but don't know where to begin? Your journey starts here at Dev School. At Dev School, we unlock the world of .NET development like you've never seen it before. With a wide range of courses and resources, we cover everything from .NET MAUI through C Sharp and Entity Framework to TypeScript, Solid Principles, Design Patterns, Azure Bicep, Blazor, AI, and much more. Why choose us? Because at Dev School, we don't just teach, we prepare you for the real world with our hand on courses, challenging projects, and the support of industry experts, you'll be ready to take on any challenge and stand out in the .NET development field. Whether you're starting from scratch or looking to deepen your knowledge, we have everything you need to take your career to the next level. Join the Dev School community today and take the first step towards your future as a .NET developer. Get a subscription and begin your journey to success with us. Your adventure in the world of development awaits. We're going to create this page, allowing a user to register as part of the app. Remember that in this video series, we're only working on the graphical part. To do this, I've reopened the project that we worked on in the last video. It's a project called Maui Delivery. As part of the views folder, I'm going to create a new file. We'll use the .NET Maui content page template, and I'm going to rename it Create Account View. Once this page is created, I'll proceed to navigate the app.xaml.cs file, and I'll change the start page to the page we've created named Create Account View. Let's save the changes, and to see how the app looks as we build it, I'll run the application in the emulator. With this, we now have the page we created as the initial page of the application. With this, we'll be conducting various tests. The next step we will do is open the file we created in a previous video. You can watch the video if you haven't already. In that video, we created a file called Login View, or the initial view of the app that allows a user to log in. What I'm going to do then is copy all the content from this page. I'm going to copy the entire grid that we have as the main content of the app or this page. I'm going to copy this content. I return to the page we just created and will replace the vertical stack layout with this content. I'm doing this because we'll be reusing a lot of the code from the previous page. Here we can see some issues because we haven't imported the namespace that we had in the previous view. So I'm going to copy this namespace with the Skia prefix and paste it into the new page we just created. This resolves the problem we saw earlier. If we look at the emulator, you can see that we now have the design from the page we created earlier. So, we need to adjust this design to fit what we need. How do we do this? Well, first, I'm going to look for a specific label control, which has the text Login to Continue. I'm going to proceed to remove this label control. I save the changes, look at the emulator, and the control we've removed was the one located below the text that says Welcome. Let's modify the content of this control as well. We'll look for the label that has the welcome content, and I'm going to put in the text create your account. With this, we have replaced the content of this label control. The next step is to create a third section of controls, that is, an icon and an entry type control, so the user can also enter their name for registration, in addition to their email and a password. To do this, I'm going to look for the one of these grid sections within my XAML code, inside the vertical stack layout, which you can see is part of the vertical stack layout. I copy the content and just above the grid with copied, I'm going to paste it to create a third section, which will give us an interface similar to what you can see on the screen. 
we're going to change some elements of this section, such as the icon we use. Instead of F0E0, it will be the F007 icon. I save the changes, and with this, we have replaced the icon used for this section. I'll also replace the entries placeholder with name instead of email. We'll insert some text as well, for example, let's use .NET MAUI bot as the username. Ok, we now have the name, email, and a section for the user to enter their password. A couple of controls we no longer need are forgot your password and create your account, since we only need one button to trigger the action of registering the user. So let's remove these two controls. To do this, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the XAML code. After the grid sections that we've replaced, I will remove the last label and button, leaving only the first button control. I remove this content, save the changes, and you can see in the emulator that we have successfully eliminated those controls. Now let's modify some properties of the remaining button, like the text property to say create your account instead of login. With these changes, the UI is ready for user registration. Now let's start applying the flow with application will follow. How do we do this? Well, let's stop the application for a moment. We'll navigate to the file loginview.xaml, which is the first view we created in a previous video. We'll proceed to find one of the buttons, the create your account button, which is part of the vertical stack layout. I do this because I want to add a xname attribute with the value create account to this control and create an event handler for the clicked event. We let Visual Studio help us with this task and we now have this event handler automatically created in the code behind. As part of this event handler, what we're going to do is an await navigation.pushAsync, indicating that we want to navigate to a new instance of create account view. Finally, as we're utilizing a navigation stack, we'll return to the app.xaml.cs file, and instead of indicating that the initial page will be a new instance of create account view, we will specify that we want the initial page to be of the navigation page type. Passing a new instance of login view as a parameter. I know there are better ways to handle navigation, as I've shown in other videos, but this time we'll opt for a straightforward flow since we're only demonstrating the graphical aspect of the application. Therefore, we will use a navigation page to carry out the actions of navigating to other pages. Let's then start the execution of the application once more. Ready, we have our page being displayed here. Something I dislike about this design is the navigation bar that appears at the top. We can address this by going to loginview.xaml, and here within the content page, there's a property called navigation page that has navigation bar. We can assign a value of false to hide this panel or the one we saw at the top, resulting in a better presentation. So let's test this flow. We'll click on the button that says create your account, which takes us to the page we've created earlier. I'm going to visit the XAML code of this page to once again apply the property of navigation page that has navigation bar set to false. Saving the changes. And ready, we now have the login page, the page to create a new account, and in the following videos, we'll be creating the different pages that will be part of this application in the graphical interface only.